So we just had a mom came in hysterical because her boyfriend's driving here with her two-year-old child that is not, he's not responsive. He's breathing, but not, won't wake up. Okay. And does he know to keep an eye out for an ambulance, or do we have a phone number for him? We are talking to him right now. We can what, tell him How that. far is he out? Where is he at? Okay. How old was the child again? Two-year-old. Okay, so he may have returned. And they're coming from the valley? Yes. Okay. He may have fallen in the bathtub. Hey, and an ambulance to respond towards I-80 are going to be rendezvousing with a vehicle coming from the valley with a non-responsive child. Okay. Okay. Okay, where's he at? He just passed the TA. We told him to keep driving. So he just passed the TA. Okay. Yep. Is, um, would, would he be able to call 911 and talk directly with me? I can ask him. Can he call 911 and talk? What's your name? Hello? Hi, this is the 911 dispatcher. Are you the man I'm supposed to call? Yeah, I, I, yes, you are. Yeah, okay, where, yes, what mile post are you at right now? I'm at exit 80 or 23, so, so I guess... It's a 23? Vehicle passing mile post 23 right now. Okay, we want you to drive the speed limit. I know you're probably pretty scared right now. I can't drive the speed limit. I can't drive the speed limit, please. I just, I okay, the, they're I coming. Drive my, the speed limit. Please, please don't make me drive the speed limit, please. I will not drive unsafe, but I am not going to speed limit. Sorry, sir, I can't is, do that. I okay, can't listen, do that. Okay, listen, sir, listen to me. I'm getting you help. I need you to stay calm so I can I help you, okay? Help, but there's nothing you can do in this moment. The only I thing have, okay. Do, it's Sir, so That's the only I need you to do. listen to me, okay? My ambulance is coming, and I have a message I need to relay between you and them. Okay. okay. Is the baby breathing? I don't know. He was breathing when we got in the car, but I don't know if he is now. I'm so scared. Okay. I'm so scared. On May 1st, 2018, Jesse James Hartley was babysitting his girlfriend's two-year-old son, Brandon Green. At some point, the child became unresponsive and Jesse raced to the hospital to get Brandon medical treatment. While he was driving, he was on the phone with 911 and he claimed that the little boy had accidentally slipped and fallen in the bathtub and may have been underwater for some time. This may come as no surprise, but it would turn out that little Brandon's condition had not been caused by an accident that day. This is Monsters. The phone was still on as Jesse and Deputy Andy Cop tried to resuscitate Brandon. Jesse was instructed to pull over at mile marker 18 where he would meet an ambulance. Deputy Cop arrived first and performed CPR on the child and when the ambulance arrived, Brandon was rushed to Evanston Regional Hospital. Unfortunately, despite everyone's best efforts, the two-year-old was pronounced dead after he arrived. Jesse James Harley was born on June 9, 1999 and lived in the small town of Mountain View in Wyoming. Normally, I would tell you how far from the closest recognizable city it is, but there really isn't one close by. It's about two hours away from Salt Lake City, Utah, but otherwise it's quite literally in the middle of nowhere. He lived there in a house that he shared with his girlfriend, Shannon Sherman, who had a two-year-old son named Brandon Green. On May 1st, 2018, Shannon was in the nearby town of Evanston with a friend while Jesse was at home with Brandon. He claimed that they had a pretty normal day. He's just been been eating, like, as Shannon was leaving, you say. And, um, got up, 
FBI, picked up his nest from eating and pulled out some cars, we're playing with some cars, you know, like I told you before, it was a normal day, we just play, um, went into the kitchen, or I should say living room, and played, I don't know what that is, just a video game, oh, okay. but he likes to sit there and play with the fake controller while I play, so we did that for a little bit. And then he got up, I was like, you want to go play with your toys? He's like, yeah. And I was like, all right, we can go find some Boss Baby. So we took him into his room, found some Boss Baby, let him play with his toys for a little bit. I went back to my game. Went back in there, checked on him, asked him if he went to the bath, took him in for a bath, put him in the bath. Um, sat with him until it's done filling up. Played with him for like two seconds, and I got up. Went to the kitchen and opened the fridge door, grabbed a code red, took a few drinks out of it, sat there for like five seconds, set the drink down, and then went back in there and found, picked him up out of the bath, and he spit blood on my face, and tried performing CPR, which failed. Jesse then explained that he had not been able to find his car keys and spent a few minutes looking for them before finally getting in the car and heading to the hospital in Evanston, about 40 minutes away. While driving, he called Shannon and told her that Brandon was breathing but unresponsive and she hung up and went directly to the hospital and let them know what was going on. At the hospital, staff called 911 and got authorities involved. They sent deputies and an ambulance to intercept Jesse somewhere along his route to the hospital. So I went to pull off the road and realized that where I was going to pull off was a really bad spot where I could get hit or a whole car could get hit or officers wouldn't have been able to reach me. So I drove down to the sisters or down to the camera exit. I parked, I pulled him out of his car seat and I started trying to perform CPR on him again, where I then lost the 911 operator and tried calling 911 multiple times and it still wouldn't work, so I tried stopping the bystander where then a officer, I'm not sure who, but an officer pulled up and helped me perform CPR, where I then realized I was doing it wrong the entire time. It was immediately clear that something else had happened to Brandon. Deputy Cop would later testify that the story about Brandon being in the tub didn't seem to match what he saw at the scene. Doctors in the ER also questioned Jesse's story. They called in a pediatrician to do a thorough examination of Brandon's body where she found bruising on his face, forehead, both ears, chin, collarbone area, torso, arms, feet, back of the head, shoulder blades, and spinal column. Of course, children often get hurt, and it's not unusual for a two-year-old to have a few bruises. But the doctor stated that it was unusual to see it covering the entire body. She said she also found abrasions to the inside of the mouth, which is usually an indication of abuse. The medical examiner found more evidence that backed up the theory that Brandon had been abused. He found extensive bruising on the child's body and was able to determine that the bruising was fresh. He was also able to determine that the injuries inside of Brandon's mouth had occurred that day. The ME found evidence of diffused brain hemorrhage consistent with repetitive violent shaking. Most people have heard of shaken baby syndrome, where a young child is shaken to the point of causing permanent brain damage or death. The action causes the brain to bounce back and forth inside the skull, causing injuries to the front and back of the child's brain. The bruising on the shoulders and collarbone matched where someone's hands would be placed when they were shaking a child. Not surprisingly, the medical examiner found no water in Brandon's lungs, which did not support the story that Jesse found him face down in the tub. Brandon's cause of death was determined to be non-accidental head injuries indicative of abusive head trauma so severe the boy would have survived only 5 to 15 minutes after the injuries were sustained. That meant that the fatal injury couldn't have been inflicted by anyone else in the days or even hours prior. On May 3rd, Jesse was arrested for the murder of Brandon Green, and when he was interviewed by Sergeant Travis Gregory, he told the same story again. 
Of course, the investigators knew that there were details about the case that didn't match the story. One of the problems authorities found at the house was evidence that Jesse had attempted to clean up blood, which was conveniently omitted from his story. Well, what point did he spit up blood on you? When I picked him up. So right. When you, right when you got him? I almost want to say, like, as I picked him up, I kind of squeezed him and kind of forced some of that out. I, like, not, like, squeezed him, but, like, I just kind of picked him up. And I, I almost want to say me picking him up caused him to, like, cough out, like, a bloody water on me. Was that when you got him right on the tub or after you put the pull-up on? It was after I pulled him out of the tub, like, right as I pulled him right up. Right as you pulled him up, then he spit on you? Yeah. Okay, was it a lot? It was bit. still on my face when it was, when I, I don't want to say it was a lot, no. Okay. And it was, you think it was blood? I, I believe so. It could have been throw up because whenever we were performing CPR in the car, he was, he a bunch of throw up was coming up. Okay. And my face smelled like throw up after that point, which I don't, I didn't, I don't recall smelling throw up before then, but it could have been throw up. I don't know. Jesse was asked very clearly if he had cleaned up before he left, and he said that he had cleaned up some milk that was spilt earlier that day, and he had wiped his hands before he left for the hospital. He said he used a rag to wipe his hands and then dropped it on the ground because he was more worried about getting help for Brandon. Clean anything up with wet wipes? I want to say I wiped it off with a wet wipe. Okay, when, when did you... Like right after I wiped myself off, I, like I saw the wipe and I wiped his chest. I'm gonna say I threw that in the, in the garbage. Okay. How many wipes do you think you used there? One or two. So was there? Where did you get those from? His room. His room. So did you stop at his room? Tell me how. I just saw the wipes laying right inside his room. I grabbed a few. I almost want to say that's where I grabbed the, the piece of cloth that I washed my hands off with. Okay. So you were coming down the hallway with him? Mm-hmm. From my room. And you saw the wipes? Uh, yeah, and I wiped him off. And I'm sorry I'm not being 100% clear here, but yeah, I wiped him off and then I wiped my hands off and then I threw it away. Okay. Any idea why? Well, you took the time to do that, I guess, and put it in the garbage, not just keep on trusting. Now his story was that he got some wet wipes out of Brandon's room, used them to clean Brandon, and then threw them in the garbage. When confronted by the evidence, Jesse continued to deny that anything had happened outside of his original story. You think I'm just straight up lying to you? I do. You think that, but I'm not. I have proof. Could I have picked him up wrong? Could I have... Carried him wrong? I don't know. Could I have... I don't know. Please tell me. If there's something else, please tell me. I agree with you. There is something else. What? I, I don't know what that is. I honestly... I don't think you're telling me the truth. I don't know if something happened too scared to talk about it. I, I told you okay. everything. Like, I told you I'm everything. You. you can tell me what it is. The only time I even picked him up was when I picked him up from the bath. For the bath. It's the only time I ever picked him up. The injuries to Brandon were not sustained by handling him too roughly. Picking him up aggressively or him bouncing around while Jesse was holding him while looking for his keys would not have caused the injuries inside Brandon's skull. Those injuries and the bruising consistent with shaking him happened in the time frame where Jesse was alone with Brandon. Up until this point, Sergeant Gregory had only mentioned that the medical evidence didn't back up his story. The investigator then very clearly explained what the injuries were and how they would have been caused. Of course, that's when Jesse's story finally changed. Uh, you're right. I should have been honest from the beginning. I should have. And then I, I, everything was true. The rest of it was true. The bath, everything. I dropped him and I was putting him in the bath. My dumb ass, what do I do? He's still conscious. He was still conscious. Like, I swear, he was still conscious. I was like, are you okay? He was crying. I got him to calm down. And I still stuck him, stuck him in the bath. And I shouldn't have. I, I didn't think it was that bad, but I guess thinking about it, falling from this high down to a, down to a floor, it's pretty bad. 
Okay. And I was really scared. I'm sorry I lied to you. I'm sorry I didn't tell you. But I swear it was an accident. And I swear I didn't mean to. And I was so scared. And I'm so scared that you're going to use this against me, but I can't. I can't. I can't get up around it. I can't. I dropped him. I'm sorry. It's just as careless as me leaving him in the bathtub. But it just makes me seem like such a shitty person. But I was just trying to do what was best for him. He went on to explain that his story was true up until the point of the bath. He said they went into the bathroom, he took Brandon's clothes off, and when he picked him up to put him in the bath, he slipped, fell, and hit the back of his head on the step to the tub. Jesse said that Brandon started crying but calmed down and said he was alright. When the investigator asked about the wet wipes, Jesse said that that was when he used them because there was a little blood, but it never seemed clear exactly where the blood was coming from because there was no cut or abrasion on the back of Brandon's head. Jesse said he thought the blood was coming from his mouth, but based on his story, Brandon hadn't hit his face or mouth. The new story made more sense than his original story, but it still didn't explain all of the medical evidence. Like most people who change their story during a criminal investigation, he seemed to be adding just enough information to justify the evidence while still minimizing his own guilt. The Uinta County attorney stated that they were not claiming that Jesse set out to kill Brandon that day, but that his reckless actions caused his death. She pointed out that his story had changed multiple times when confronted by new evidence. The defense relied on the argument that the investigators were just looking for abuse where there wasn't any, stating, quote, When you're a hammer, everything is a nail. There was also evidence presented by the medical examiner that could have indicated sexual assault, but the defense argued that the specific findings could have also been caused by chronic constipation, which the boy had a history of. Because of that, Jesse was charged with first-degree murder that occurred as a result of the aggravated child abuse and sexual abuse. Despite the murder not being premeditated, the murder charge was for felony murder, which made it a first-degree offense. Felony murder is when a murder is committed during the commission of another felony, such as child abuse in this case. The jury spent four hours deliberating before finding Jesse guilty of the first-degree murder while acquitting him on the sexual abuse charge. Jesse James Hartley was sentenced to life in prison for the murder with a concurrent sentence of 18 to 25 years for the aggravated child abuse. He appealed his sentence in 2020 on the grounds that the sentence for the murder and the child abuse were for the same crime, so the Supreme Court eliminated the sentence for child abuse, leaving him with just a life sentence. He filed an appeal to his conviction in 2021, but the Supreme Court rejected it. Jesse James Hartley will have to do his time for the murder of a two-year-old child. Whether he's willing to admit it or not, the evidence has spoken and it labeled him a monster. If you're a fan of true crime, hit subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss an episode. You can also hit like or leave us a comment. You can check out our other show, Somewhere Sinister, on YouTube or anywhere that you listen to podcasts. If you'd like to support the show, check out our merchandise at thisismonsters.com. The link is in the description. Thanks again, and be safe.